Hi, I'm Brian Ellis, and welcome to a special edition of the Creative Formula for the Bass Guitar. Today is my fourth installment of my Reflection Series. In my Reflection Series, I take the time to review uh, the videos that aired this year and scored high on Google Search Engine, YouTube, also special requests from my website cityscopepresents.com the future of bass improvisation and also uh, videos that got high reviews from um, Manhattan Neighborhood Network and also our very own Brooklyn Public Network I would also like to take this opportunity to wish everyone a very happy holiday and also a healthy and prosperous coming of the new year. Also if you see a video or something on a video that you like please feel free to log on to cityscopepresents.com the future of bass improvisation and also in the coming year you could expect the, the best in bass videos also scales, chords, and the best in bass improvisation and chordal studies and bass skills. Well, at this time, uh, also remember, please feel free to log on or you can email me at bassbrother79 at AOL.com. Uh, with all this said and done, Let's go to our first video, and we're gonna about to, we're about to go to the plasma. So my first video is from my study in B flat. So let's take a look. I have an octave down, so if I have something like.
take that F and I bounce off it. I take that F as a launching point. Usually your five becomes um, a launching point. bass player to get a little daylight and you have um, uh, what they have you have something to draw from a well to draw from like all your runs and your riffs wouldn't all sound the same and also while I'm on the topic usually what I do usually what I do I like to stay right in the pocket of the song pocket of the song because usually um, once we get in the idea of improv and improvisation sometimes we have a tendency to be like a kid in a candy store we have all these new runs we have all these, all these runs now that we know and we're so anxious to play them out We have a tendency to overplay and we step on um, our musicians, other musicians' toes, the piano player, the guitar player, the drummer, the sax. So usually, I let it ride, I let it ride for a long time. And I do my accent. That's coming over from um, Germany and European style is the um, the natural mix that's incorporated right there in in your jam. that's being incorporated right into the jam. Like if you was in the studio and the engineer is mixing you, he, he'll be mixing where everybody be going in a nice level. So he be mixing you in and mixing you out. So now that same characteristic is being carried over to our natural musicianship. I like to take a look at a video called Bass Brother 79 in Action. And in this video, I received an email on shout music. Let's take a look at it. It says, Dear Brother Brian, I play the bass in church, and on Sundays at the end of service, the musicians close out the service with shout music. Can you help me understand the makeup of shout music 
and B, maybe the notes that are involved. P.S. I try to keep up, but I fall behind often from Brooklyn, New York. Thank you very much. Um, keep in mind that some of the people just wanted their uh, locale rather than their name uh, for the email. All right, so let's get right into it. Um, the first thing that I usually do when I'm doing shout music in the church, I usually set myself up. I usually be cat a corner with the organ on one side and my drummer on the other side, and I'm right in the middle. And I have this per peripheral vision where I can watch the organ's bass foot, his bass pedal, and watch my drummer's bass foot to keep to keep up. When the when the organ goes up, the bass goes up. When, when the bass go down and the organ go down, the bass goes with the bass foot. So what I usually do, I usually take a flat key. I'm usually in A flat, and I call out the notes. I say A flat, C, D flat, D natural, E flat, F, G flat, G, I couple it right over to my C, D flat again, D, E flat, then from this E flat I go to my low F, F, G flat, G, A flat, then I turn it around where I switch my pinky and go A flat, B flat, B natural, C, D flat, F, G flat, G, A flat, and I start to expand it. So let's 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 see how it sounds. to take a look at a new approach that I developed called screen mode. Now when this aired on the program, it sent my Google Analytics through the roof. As you're watching, you can see why. Let's take a look at the plasma. At this time, I would like to switch into screen mode to demonstrate a major scale and I would like to fuse it with a major scale from a, the flatted 5 of G that will be my D flat 
And as I run those two scales together, is um, a derivative of the Arabian scale, which is applied two major scales fused together and it has a dissonant tone. For example, See if we can if we can call it out. G A B C D E F sharp G then D flat E flat F G flat A flat B flat C D flat again. fuse them together. Next, I will also like to take a look at, while I'm in screen mode, take a look at that spider so you can get a, a good look at it. And I will come across from my B flat and I will couple them together and I'll go right across. develop dexterity your homes today with a program on the F minor scale. Today we have a lot of work to do. I want to look at the F minor scale in its pure form and if time allows I want to take a look at its relationship to its relative major, A flat major, and also the sixth degree D flat major. So let's take a look at it. I like to start at the top of the fretboard on my lowest F, the first fret. So let's see if we can call out a couple notes and get it down pat. First we're going to start off with this F here. So let's, let's try to call out a couple notes. F. B flat C D flat E flat and F is octave then I like to descend F E flat D flat C B flat G 
then F again. thing I like to do is take that pattern which will be one, three, four finger wise, also one, three, four, again, then one, three. So I have one, three, four, one, three, four, again, then one, three, then descending it will be three, one, four, three, one, four, three, one. Having your finger in, getting your finger in, the mind of finger in. My last video highlight is on advanced solo skills for the bass. This video is also a prelude to what you can expect for the up and coming new year. I also like to thank each and every one that's been a supporter and thank you for a successful year and for bringing CityScopePresents.com and the creative formula for the bass guitar to new levels and new heights in bass advanced improvisation. Well, with all that said and done, see you next time. Let's watch this video. So I'm gonna be starting on my E string and I'm gonna be starting on the A on the fifth fret on my E string. So let's call out a few notes. Let's call out um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, then A, then descending, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, then I make a maneuver and descend, I put my pinky, A, G, F, Open E, D, low C, low B, then A. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Then from this A, which is the seventh fret of the D string, I go, I go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. The octave. The 14th fret of the G string. All right, let's keep going. A G F E D C B A. Then linear. A G F E D C B. Open A. a slur and then I couple it with that minor third to get that minor working with me. Then I have an accidental right here which is my flat five against my A so I would have A, E flat to get that dissonance. You want to try to um, get some of those notes, um, I call them missing notes when you're doing the solos. You want to take notes that you usually not inside the scale and use it as a, a launching pad. I use a lot of notes that's outside the scale when you're um, studying jazz improv, 
right? Um, you usually have something called compound chords when you start talking about your ninths and your elevens and your thirteens. So they go they go up the scale and you add two scales into one. Thank <laughs> you.